praise God. Hallelujah. Well, good morning. <laughs> good morning, Anchor Church, and good morning all of you that are able to tune in, whether it's this morning or some other time during the week that works for you. Praise God for a Monday morning devotional where we devote ourselves once again to the teaching of the Word. We devote ourselves to the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. My name is Brother Bob from Anchor Church of Sarasota, Florida, and as many of you know and are aware uh, that we have Spanish service on live streamed on Tuesday evenings for those who speak Spanish. It's a wonderful ministry by Brother Angel Romero. On Thursday nights, we live stream uh, at 7.30, and usually it's a pastoral teaching. And then uh, we also have church at 9.30 at our local destination, uh, local location rather, at 3341 Goshio Road. Hey, if you've tuned in this morning or at any time you tune in, please hit the like button. Um, and so that we can see who's tuning in. A lot of times we see views, but we don't really know who's watching. So uh, just it would be good to see who's able to tune into this this morning. Praise God. You may wonder, where on earth is Brother Bob today? You know, we've done picnics with Jesus in the park, and um, we've done a lot of different things. And, and uh, today uh, we're actually going mining, or I've been doing some mining and uh, if you're not familiar with mining, a lot of times you have to take a uh, magnifying glass with you because you're looking at rocks. You have to take a rock hammer with you to dig things out and, and pry things loose. There's things that have to be pried loose. And uh, anyway, I'm going to be talking about some different things that pertain to mining. But before I get into that, I want to just make a couple of comments. And good morning, Sister Romero, and good morning to all of you that are watching and tuned in this morning. Again, whenever you can tune in, uh, God bless you, and I pray that you're able to tune in, uh, whether at whatever time it might be, and that you would be able to share these with someone else. If you hit the share button, somebody will be blessed. You know, you may say, well, I didn't get much out of that. Well, maybe today you didn't, but maybe another time you would. By the way, go back and listen to Pastor Scott's teaching Thursday night. Uh, where he mentioned, talked about the blood, and we were talking about forgiveness and people carrying shame and all that. That was so good. There's, there's a lot of depth in that. I've listened to it several times myself over, even though I was live there listening to it. You, you never know how something may come back around to really be a blessing and, and to help you. Praise God. So before we get into talking about mining, uh, I, I want to just kind of go through a, a few things related to that and some that aren't. And, and first of all, I know people have asked the question in the past, is there a difference or what is the difference between praise and worship? And, and it's, it's good for all of us to really understand the difference between praising and worshiping and the difference between praise songs and worship songs. Praise songs lift up and exalt the one you're praising. Praise songs lift up and exalt Jesus because they are about him. They are not about us. It's a little cold in the mind this morning, so I'm going to take a, a little drink of coffee here. So praise songs lift up and exalt Jesus, and worship songs are about our relationship with Jesus. Praise is about him. Worship is about us and where we are with him. Praise breaks down spiritual barriers, spiritual uh, strongholds or yokes of bondage. Praise can break barriers. Worship breaks us. The difference between praise and worship is praise is unto him. Worship is about where we are in him. And while praise can break spiritual barriers, worship is designed to break us. The word worship in both the Hebrew and the Greek literally means to prostrate, prostrate oneself, prostrate to oneself. That is to lay oneself flat before the Lord. Worship is a yielding, it is a surrendering and a humbling of ourselves before God. And it is submitting ourselves afresh and anew to God. Praise is exaltation, it is adoration, it expresses faith and confidence in God. It is an expression of victory. Praising when we need to be worshiping ignores our need 
to humble ourselves before God and resubmit and recommit our lives to God. Praise and worship are not preliminary things. They are preparatory for every service. That's why it's so important for people to not come in to church and sit or stand as statues, looking around like they're waiting for a show to begin or for some magic act to occur. Praise and worship are preparatory and they prepare us to get into the presence of the Spirit of the Lord, both through praising and exalting Him and from taking a look at where we are and worshiping Him by contrast of where He is and where we are. And we humble ourselves and worship again is designed to break us. Not in a, in a, in a sense like breaking a rock open as I would with my rock hammer, but break us in the sense of a horse being broken and yielding itself, surrendering itself to its rider. Praise God, where the Lord can lead and direct us in plain paths for his name's sake. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Our participation in praise and worship prepares our hearts to hear and to receive the word of the Lord. Now you might say, well, Brother Bob, what's that got to do with, with mining? Um, and, and so, well, because we mine things out of the depths of the earth. All the precious stones and minerals, gold and silver, everything that we deem valuable to man uh, by today's saying, you know, rubies and sapphires and, and those type of things are mined out of the depths of the earth. Even the sea has treasures in it and you have to go deep into the sea and deep sea expeditions will mine things up out of the depths of the sea. And similarly, as believers in the Lord, we mine things out of the depths of God's word. Oh, amen. Praise God. We mine things out of the depths of God's word. Now, we've heard about diamonds and how that uh, it takes a great deal of pressure to produce a diamond. You know, it's kind of interesting. I, I discovered, I did some reading, and, and diamonds don't really come from coal. People think that, you know, that's what we've been told because they really come from, they're crystals of pure carbon that are formed by high temperatures, well over a thousand degrees, and by extreme pressure in the Earth's mantle. And typically what I was reading is volcanic eruptions bring these diamonds up out of the depths of the Earth, where high temperatures, extremely high temperatures and pressions, pressure has, has pressed upon these crystals of pure carbon and caused them to form what we would call diamonds. And don't anybody come to my house to attack me. This is not a diamond, but it kind of gives you an illustration, right? Praise God. Hallelujah. Pressure, none of us like, we all want to avoid pressure in our natural human state. Who wants pressure in their life? But do you know pressure is a necessary part of life? There's pressure down here in the mine. There's pressure when you go deep into the water. Um, there's things that people have to breathe. Or, uh, the deeper a diver goes, I think he has to breathe a mixture of helium and oxygen to keep his lungs inflated. But pressure is a necessary part of life. It's how we came into this world. The pressure that was within the birth canal as that baby was passing through forced a transformation from one existence into another, from one world into another. In fact, that pressure is what brought forth new life. Because as the baby was coming and his lungs, his chest was being, or her chest was being compressed, the lungs were compressing as the baby is passing through that birth canal. And then they expand when they come out of that birth canal, allowing it to draw in a breath. And of course, they're entering in from a warm environment of 98.6 degrees into a very cold environment. You ever step out in the cold and go, <gasps> well, that's exactly what happens. So there's thermal things taking place. There's compression and expansion of the lungs that are opening to draw in. It's pressure. And it's pressure that keeps us, uh, that, that keeps us intact. Atmospheric pressure keeps us intact. If there wasn't atmospheric pressure, we'd be floating off into the sky someplace. And just like a severe drop in somebody's blood pressure can bring about cardiovascular collapse resulting in death, it's necessary that we maintain a right pressure because too high of a blood pressure can lead to stroke and other problems. And so pressure has to be regulated in our life. But we all need pressure. And even ocular pressure in the eye. It's the intracranial pressure that is in our brain. Osmotic pressure that is in the vascular compartment in our, in our bloodstreams, in our, in our veins, and in our arteries. And of course, there's even cellular 
pressure. Pressure is what we apply to stop a bleeding wound. A peristaltic pressure is what moves through the intestines to push out and force out the removal of waste from our body. We can't live without pressure. The problem is most of us try to. And you know, God doesn't force himself on us when we make mistakes. God does not force himself on us. But there is a pressure that comes by conviction of the Holy Ghost, if you will. A spiritual pressure, a spiritual compression to say, hey, listen, we got to deal with this. We got to we got to work with this thing. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, talking about pressure, um when we make mistakes, and I know I've I've taught on this a little bit before. By the way, the ministries of reconciliation and the different teachings about shame, please go back and listen to those if it's been a while since you've heard them. Go back and listen to them again. If you've never heard them, please scroll down. Most of the uh, morning devotionals now have been titled so that you can find the title of those. And those would, I believe those would be a blessing to you and to, ever, to whomever you might know that might be benefited from those. Everybody on earth is going to make a mistake. And, you know, unfortunately, we put levels of penalties upon mistakes. You know, you get a traffic ticket, that's one penalty. You, you break a criminal law, that's another penalty. But to God, all sin is, is a penalty. All sin is the same to him. There's not a big sin and little sin. There's not big wrongs and little wrongs. To God, it's all wrongs. It's all error. And here's the good news, though. Our mistakes are not final. Our failures are not final. When we make a mistake, we are not a mistake. We may fail, but we are not a failure. Mistakes actually have a ministry that can help us. But if we don't respond to them correctly, then those mistakes can maim us, and they can maul us, and they can depress us, and they can discourage us, and they can defeat us, and they can rob us of our joy, and they can steal our future. But if we allow our mistakes to help us, they can take us, to new places. They can take us to a new level because our mistakes are not final. Praise God. Mistakes have portals of possibilities and avenues of achievements. Praise God. Praise God. Our adversary hates us so bad that he'll do everything he can to keep reminding us of our mistakes. But God doesn't ever bring up our mistakes. He doesn't ever rehearse our mistakes, and neither should we. And God doesn't humiliate you or humiliate me or embarrass us about our mistakes. His Spirit says, discover the door that's in your mistake and let it take you to another place that nothing else could have taken you to but that mistake. Praise God. And what does it mean to sin? Sin means to miss the mark. That's literally what the word sin means, to miss the mark. Well, that would be a mistake, wouldn't it? I'm missing. It's just like trying to hit a stake in the ground. If you miss, you've missed the stake. <laughs> Praise God. But mistakes can bring us to new places. You know, things aren't always as they see, as they seem to be. There's a thing called brain games. I don't know if it's still on anymore, but it used to be on TV where they would do things right before your very eyes. And what looks so obvious and so real to you. And you would swear in a court of law that what you saw was real and that that really happened. It, it didn't happen that way at all. It was an illusion. And there are masters of illusion and masters of, I guess they call it magic acts or whatever, that can fool you into thinking that what you're seeing is real. But oftentimes things are not always as they see to be. And how we see is so vitally important to our progress, and to our forgiveness, too. Sometimes we see things people do. Oh, well, they did that against me, did they? Or was there an internal problem going on in them? We have to understand that as humans, we're all going to make mistakes. We're all going to sin and fall short of the glory of God. And we have to mine out of those things. We have to dig into those things and take a look at, now, wait a minute, there's a possibility here that there may be some rocks embedded in the soil of their life that need to be dug out. And it's a struggle that they're personally having in their lives. And it wasn't meant for me. It wasn't meant for me. Or maybe in somehow I've contributed to that. 
Praise the Lord. Here's the bottom line. God tells us that we can come out of anything. And God will bring us out of bondage and put our feet on a solid rock. He even will put a new song in our heart and in our mouth. You can come out of anything. You can be delivered and set free from any yoke of bondage today. And God can put your feet on a solid rock. All you have to do is yield yourself and turn yourself over to him. Let him take his hammer and let him break away and chip away the stony parts of your heart. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Let God reach down with his magnifying glass, which is stronger and more powerful than any electron microscope, and let him search and search yourself and search the word of the God of the Lord and see what there is in you. Praise God. If there's any wicked way in you, see if there's some fault, see if there's a mistake someplace. Praise God. And God can bring forth out of your life diamonds that have been formed under the pressure of a mistake. Our mistakes are not final, praise God. The adversary wants to use our mistakes to maim and cripple us. And I don't care how bad a mistake is, God never brings it up. He uses our mistakes to bring us to repentance and to confession and to a change of heart. And once we do that, we don't have a past anymore because all we have left is a future because he has forgiven our past and cast it into the sea of his forgetfulness. He, does, he forgets it. He remembers it no more. And the only reason, again, as I've mentioned before, that God allows us to remember our mistakes is to show us how, how greatly we need him. Praise God. You know, I said things are not always as they seem. A while back, I actually had pyrite. For those of you that are into geology and you know what that is, pyrite is a rock, and it has a lot of little crystal thingies on it like this. It's not perfectly round like this. It's irregular as a rock would really be but it kind of looks like that, and it's called fool's gold. People, when they were mining, believed that they had struck gold and found gold, and it turned out that it was called pyrite, which looks very much like what gold looks like, but it's not the real thing. Sometimes things we see are not the real thing. They're not the true thing, and we have to be careful. That's true of doctrine. There's false doctrines that appear to be real, there's situations that appear to be real. There may be, whatever it is, fill in the blank. But things are not always as they seem. Things are not always as they appear. And we have to be careful that we are not looking at fool's gold or that we aren't accepting fool's gold. And instead, we're accepting the real thing. And this is where it takes some work on our part to turn our, on our mining lights, our helmets, of, and get a helmet of protection on our heads and take up our hammers and start breaking apart those things in our life that don't need to be there and reach down inside and pull out what does need to be there. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Again, God uses every mistake we make, every stony place we find ourselves. He uses that to bring us to a place of repentance and to a confession and to a change of heart. And once we do that, our past is gone. Old things have passed away and all things become new. And we remember our mistakes so that we can appreciate his grace. Pastor Scott did an excellent job talking about grace and the mercies of God. And we can appreciate the grace and the mercy and the love of God that he has bestowed upon us as we look and see our frailty and we see our weakened humanity and we see our great need of him. But he doesn't remember, nor does he bring up any of it because he is not interested in holding on to our past, and he's not interested in us holding on to our past either. If we have accepted some things in our life that aren't true, like pyrite, like fool's gold, we need to throw it away. We need to get rid of it. If there are some things about ourselves, perhaps we need to, through introspection, we need to take out our mining tools, and we need to go deep into ourselves and examine ourselves and search ourselves and see if there be any wicked way in us. And if the enemy has come and put rocks in us, we may need to dig those things out and pry those things out of our hearts and out of our minds and destroy them and turn this around and use the hammer to destroy those things. And if necessary, chip away at those things that need to be chipped away at to bring about the good. When the people of Israel first moved into Israel, that was a very rocky ground. And it is said that they took large hammer drills and drilled into the rocks and through the rocks to the earth beneath those big rocks. They couldn't move the boulders, but they drilled through them. And do you know they planted seeds 
and forced seeds down, took a little ramrod stick and pushed the seed all the way down into the soil through that rock. So when that seed began to grow, it ended up breaking apart the rocks. And today, Israel is a land that is flourishing with much vegetation. Because of that, was it hard work? You bet it was hard work. That's a lot of rocky ground they had to drill through. How much rocky ground is in us that we've allowed to accumulate over time? And maybe we need to do some drilling. And maybe we need to do some digging. And maybe we need to do some breaking apart. And maybe we need to get down into the depths of ourselves and turn on the light. And we need to get in there and we need to examine ourselves. Praise God. We are never going to change what we're not willing to confront. We've got to get down into the depths of things. We've got to get into the depths of the Word of God and let the Word of God confront us. We've got to get into the depths of the Spirit and let the Spirit confront us because we're not going to change what we're not willing to confront. If we're not spiritual like we ought to be, then we need to get off of our carcasses and get to worshiping God. Remember the difference between praise and worship? Praise exalts Him. Worship acknowledges my need of Him. Praise God. Praise God. We need to worship God. We're not going to get spiritual by simply attending church. We're not going to get spiritual by accident. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We get spiritual by determination. We have a walk with God by determination and by choice. And you get spiritual because you choose to pursue it. You reach after it. Hallelujah. If you're in the true church, then you need to thank God that you're part of his living bride. I got a problem with people that come to church and sit with that Mount Rushmore impersonation. If God ever made a way for you where there was no way, if he ever did anything for you, at least you could praise him. The curse of this generation today is being unthankful. We're seeing it all through the media. We're seeing it out in streets. Brother betraying brother. Man betraying man. Hatred. Not being thankful. But going back to mistakes, in every mistake, there is a doorway to discovery and a portal to possibility. And there's an avenue to achievement. There is something hidden in every mistake that we can learn from. We don't make progress without making some mistakes. Anybody that's ever been successful in life has made mistakes along the way. And no one makes progress without making some mistakes. But mistakes have a ministry. And they can take you to a level that nothing else can take you to. If you make up your mind that you're going to come out of that mistake, no devil can hold you back. Mistakes can minister to us. And that's how we get discoveries in science and in industry and in medicine and even spiritually. Some people will use your mistake to maul you and to harm you and to beat you and condemn you and depress you and push you down. Even in the church. But you are not defined, not even by your worst mistake. We don't have the time this morning, but if we did, I would say let's turn to Luke chapter 15 and read verses 11 down through 32. And it talks about the prodigal son who was younger and he took his father's inheritance. He took what his right was his rightful portion and he went out and he squandered it in the, on the world with riotous living, it says. Obviously, that was a, a life of debauchery. It was a life of sin. And then he found himself, when all had run out, he had nothing. He found himself working on a farm, working and feeding pigs. And he found himself being hungry, and he was eating the food that the pigs were eating. And it finally came to him, he came to himself and said, you know, at least when I was in my father's house, I had decent to eat. And so he comes back. Some movements and people are filled with the elder brother spirit. And when he came back, his elder brother was showed disdain for him. He wasn't happy that the father had received him back and said, this is my son who was dead but is now alive. He was lost, but now he's found. And the father rejoiced and put a new robe on him. He covered him and he gave him a scepter in his hand and a crown on his head and put a ring on him, so to speak, and, and brought him back into and restored him perfectly. And the older brother said, hey, you never did any of this for me. And the father said to him, you know, the whole time you've been with me, it's always been there for you. Maybe you've chosen not to take it. What is it that God's had for you that you've chosen not to take? Don't develop an elder brother spirit of jealousy when we see someone else getting blessed in the church. Praise God. If somebody comes back and somebody gets restored and somebody gets reconciled, we should be rejoicing with the angels of the Lord. 
because they rejoice when everyone comes to God and when everyone comes back to God. You see, the elder brother had a little attitude problem. He had a little jealousy thing going on. It didn't matter to him that the father forgave and restored his prodigal son. He was happy, the father was, that the boy came back. But the elder brother said, yeah, well, I know the mistakes that he made. You know, a lot of mistakes we make these days is listening to other people. Oh, that's not going to work. You shouldn't do that. We listen to other voices instead of listening to the voice of God. Discovering the will of God. There are things that can hinder us from discovering the will of God. And those things are mistakes. And one of them is listening to what other people have to say. If they're not praying and they haven't been praying and prayer didn't give them the answer, I don't want to hear it. Because that's just nothing but flesh or fear or doubt or unbelief. I don't want to listen to that. Well, that's not going to work. Really? That's interesting. It worked in the Bible. Praise God. So when the, brother, when the elder brother comes to the father and says, well, I know all the mistakes he's made. You know what the father said to him? What mistakes? What mistakes? I've covered him. I put my robe around him. God has a robe of blood covering to cover our mistakes. And God can wash us and restore us and bless us to where our sin is forgiven and forgotten, which is really what forgiveness is. Praise God. No longer holding on to it. How, how long are you going to keep holding on to those things that someone else did? Or how long are you going to hold on to the mistakes that you've made? Why don't you release those to God? Jesus said, cast all of your cares upon me, for I care for you. Take my yoke, he said. Stop carrying that yoke of bondage around on you. Take my yoke. My burden is light. My yoke is easy. It's time that we release some things. Again, just like the illustration of forgiveness, untying a knot. There's no trace of it anymore. We need to do that with other people, and we need to do that with ourselves. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice, and another, they're not going to follow. Don't listen to other voices of doubt and unbelief. Don't listen to the naysayers as, oh, that won't work. Oh, no, that won't work. You know, the devil got kicked out of heaven because of his lawlessness, which is iniquity. And he hates the church. And the reason that he hates you and me is, guess who got his job? Our praise and worship drives him crazy. Because he used to be the anointed cherub that covereth, but he got thrown out, praise God. And we're not going to get to close, we, none of us are going to get close to God if we, don't, if we have another agenda going on in our life. If we don't come to God with worship in our hearts. Most mistakes that people make or failures are nothing but symptoms of something deeper that's going on down in the mind, praise God in the mind. Put a D on the end of it instead of M-I-N-E. Do M-I-N-D in the mind. And remember, what can come into the mind can be deceptive. What can come into the mind can be an illusion. What can come into the mind can be a, a perception but not a reality. Praise God. We're not going to get close to God if we have another agenda. We're not going to get close to God if we're not going to forgive and release somebody else from their mistakes. Most of our mistakes, again, are symptoms to something not so visible on the surface, but something going down deep on the inside. And the Bible says that when we fail to ask God to forgive us, then we are unforgiven. And when we fail to forgive somebody else, we are unforgiven. But that when we fail, when we make a mistake, and we do ask God to forgive us, the Bible says he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It's God's desire to move past our past and that we all do the same. Praise God. Praise God. Maybe you're in an elder brother situation and you're looking at somebody else who left and went out and now they've come back and you're like, well, I'm not seeing true repentance. And how do you know what's going on in their heart? How do you know what right they've made with God? How do you know where they're, what their reconciliation's all about? We're not supposed to judge one another. We're supposed to support one another and rejoice and lift one another up and encourage one another and pray one for another. Have you prayed for that person you're judging? Have you prayed for that person you have ought against? Maybe the person you've got ought against is yourself. <laughs> have you released that to the Lord? See all of your mistakes as helium balloons held by strings in your hand and release them all to the Lord. Praise God. Release, just let them go. Let go and let God. Praise God. It's God's will that we follow his word. 
and not lean unto our own understanding. It's God's will that we take out our pickaxes and our, and our geological hammers and dig away the stones and dig away the things that we might find greater treasure in the depths of the word of the Lord and that we dig within ourselves and that we search ourselves and pull away those stones and those rocks that are blocking the new growth from coming up out of the ground. Praise God. It's time that we get to examining some things that are in our lives and examining the word of the Lord and allowing the word of the Lord to examine us. Praise God. It's one thing to look to the word of God, but is the word of God looking at you? You're examining it, but is it examining you? You're reading the truth, but is the truth getting into you? Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. God wants us to not lean unto our own understanding, but acknowledge him in everything that we do. And the Bible says if we do that, God will direct our path. If you acknowledge him in everything you do, the Lord shall direct your path and lead you in paths of righteousness for, for his name's sake. The point of this message is that there are things that we need to dig up and root out of our lives. Just as a farmer goes out to his field and pulls out the weeds and removes those things that are choking What's choking us spiritually? What's keeping us from having an effective prayer life? What's keeping us from praying in the Spirit? Paul said, you pray in the Spirit, you're going to build up your most holy faith. How many of us are doing that? If we're not praying in the Holy Ghost, how then are we building up our most holy faith? Well, we're not. We need to put our past behind us. We need to leave the past behind us, and we need to put everything in His loving hands. Praise God. Praise God. Lord Jesus, we pray right now, Lord, and we ask for your help, Lord, that would help us to forgive every person that has done us wrong. And we release every grudge of bitterness, Lord, as we turn on the headlamps of your spirit and look deep within our ourselves and we see those things that shouldn't be there, our wrong attitudes, Lord, and so forth. Help us to remove those and to release them like helium blues. Help us to release every grudge and every bit of resentment to you, Father. In the name of Jesus, I pray that we would forgive ourselves for every wrong and every mistake that we have committed and that we release everybody else from condemnation as well as ourselves. And in Jesus' name, we pray that all offenses that we hold on to would be let go. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, help us to mine into out of your word, Lord, and deep into your word, Lord, those things that are blessings for us. Help us to take out and find, Lord, true gold, not fake gold, but true nuggets of gold that will bless us and help us, Father, in life in Jesus' name. Praise God. I'm going to take just a few minutes in closing here. Praise God. To share something with you. And this is Jesus throughout the Bible. Jesus in every book of the Bible. We can find the word, we can find Jesus Christ in every book of the Bible. I'm sure you've heard this before from somebody, but I, I just want to share it. I just want to share it. In Genesis, Jesus is the breath of life. And he is the creator God. In Exodus, he is our Passover lamb. And he is our redeemer. And I'm saying this because this is what he is to you personally. You say, well, I see all of my mistakes. I'm, I'm depressed. I'm beaten down. I, I failed. Others are thinking horribly of me. No, they're not necessarily. May not be. See, that's a problem with things are not always as they seem. We may feel like, oh my God, I've embarrassed myself. I'm humiliated. I can't go back. I can't. That's not true. That's not true. People see things very differently. And we have to accept when someone comes and says, it's not the way you think it is. We, do, we need to accept that and, and, and believe that. And we need, to, we need to walk in faith believing. We need to walk in faith believing that when we fall, we get back up again. That when we make a mistake, we stand up and dust ourselves off from the, from the, from the mind place that we've been in. Praise God. Praise God. Every mine shaft has light at the end of its tunnel. And as men walk towards the light, they come out of the depths of where they were into the newness of light. In Exodus, God is, Jesus is the Passover lamb and our redeemer. In Leviticus, he is our high priest and our sanctification. In Numbers, he is our guide and a pillar of cloud both by day and fire by night. In Deuteronomy, he is our teacher and prophet. In Joshua, he is our mighty conqueror. I'm talking about what God can be for all of us. In Judges, he gives victory over our enemies. In Ruth, 
He is our lover and our kinsman redeemer. In 1 Samuel, he is the root of Jesse. In 2 Samuel, he is the son of David, our trusted prophet. In 1 and 2 Kings, he is the king of all kings and the Lord of all lords. And in 1 and 2 Chronicles, he is our intercessor and our high priest. In Ezra, he is our temple, our house of worship. In Nehemiah, he is your mighty wall, the rebuilder of broken down walls. In Esther, he stands in the gap as our Mordecai to deliver us from our enemies. In Job, he is our arbitrator who understands our struggles, praise God, and has the power to do something about them. In Psalms, he is our shepherd and he is our reason to sing a new song. In Proverbs, he is our wisdom to help us to make sense of life. In Ecclesiastes, he is our purpose delivering us from vanity. In Song of Solomon, he is our bridegroom and our loyal friend. In Isaiah, he is the mighty God and the counselor and our everlasting father and prince of peace. In fact, he is everything you and I need. In Jeremiah, he is our righteous branch and balm of Gilead and soothing salve for the sin sick soul. In Lamentations, he is our weeping prophet and ever faithful one in whom we can depend. In Ezekiel, he assures us that dry, dead bones can live again. If there's anything in you that's dry and dead, it can live again in the Lord Jesus Christ. In Daniel, he is our ancient of days and everlasting God who never runs out of time. In Hosea, he is our faithful lover, always beckoning us to come back and return. Even when we have abandoned him, even when we have failed, we can be restored and renewed in Jesus' name. Praise God. In Joel, he is our refuge, keeping us safe in times of trouble. In Amos, he is the husbandman, the one that we can depend on to stay by our side. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. In Obadiah, he is the Lord of the kingdom. In Jonah, he is our salvation, bringing us back within his will. In Micah, he is the judge of the nations and the ruler of his people. In Nahum, he is our jealous God. In Habakkuk, he is the Holy One. In Zephaniah, he is our witness. And in Malachi, he is the messenger of the covenant. Into the New Testament, in Matthew, he is the king of the Jews. In Mark, he's the servant teaching us. To serve. In Luke, he is the Son of Man, experiencing what we experience and feeling what we feel. In John, he is the Word and the truth made flesh and a word to stand by. In Acts, he's the Savior of the world. In Romans, he's the righteousness of God. In 1 Corinthians, he is the rock of Israel. In 2 Corinthians, he is the triumphant one who gives us victory. In Galatians, he is our liberty who sets us free and clothes us with himself. Galatians 3.27, if any man be in Christ, he has put on Christ. Praise God. In Ephesians, he's the head of the church. In Philippians, he is your peace that passes all understanding. In the book of Colossians, he is your completeness. And in 1 Thessalonians, he is our hope and the hope of our resurrection. And in 2 Thessalonians, he is our glory. In 1 Timothy, he is our faith. In 2 Timothy, he is our stability. In Titus, he is our God and Savior. In Philemon, he is our benefactor. In Hebrews, he is our perfection and radiance of glory. And in James, he is the power behind our faith. In 1 Peter, he is our example. In 2 Peter, he is our purity. 1 John, he is our life. 2 John, he is our pattern. 3 John, he is your motivation. In Jude, he is the foundation of our faith. And in Revelation, he is our soon and coming king. We need to look at him throughout the entire course of the Bible as being everything we need and everything that we don't need to be holding on to today. We need to break it out of our lives. We need to get up our, our whatever this thing is called, magnifying glass, and, and examine some things and start digging some things away and turning them away to God because in him is everything. Well, I pray this has been a blessing to you. I pray in Jesus' name that we release every offense that we hold towards anyone, including yourself, maybe including God, when life didn't go the way that we wanted it to go. 
We need to use the grace of God and by the blood of Jesus Christ that has forgiven us and forgive other people. And I pray that our lives and that our church would be led by the Spirit of God, by His will, and that His will would prevail throughout all of the earth. Praise God. And by your grace, Lord, we submit ourselves to you and we give our love to you. Praise God. Well, from the mining of the depths of the things in life, Go and be a, a blessing today to somebody. Share this with somebody. Don't forget to hit that like button. And I'll see you a week from now on Monday morning. And don't forget to tune in, if you speak Spanish, to tune in to the Spanish-speaking service on Tuesday nights at 7 p.m., Thursday at 7.30, live streaming, and Sunday morning. If you live locally and you're able to come be with us, we would love to have you join us and be a part of the wonderful body of Christ at 3341 Gosho Road. I love you. Jesus loves you. Go and love someone else. Praise God.